earliest in the evening. The Eurosport One game is finished, but that's why they call them the Rocket. Through to the semi-finals of the UK Championship 2016 with just one gap left in the draw. Now, Ronnie in the top half, a series of peculiar instances in the early rounds means that he's missed some of the big guns, but he's put everyone away. And Mark Williams probably his first huge test of the tournament so far. And didn't he deal with it well after the mid-session? As we can see, it's Murphy Selby in the first semi-final tomorrow. Jones and Foo still playing. It's 4-2 to Wales. Jamie Jones, the last Welsh hope left in this tournament. Well, Neil Foles, if Ronnie rode his luck a little bit before the mid-session interval, no such thing when we came back from the break. No, I think Dave Hendon made a really good point when he came back. He said that um, his highest break of 49 would have to be bettered if he was going to go and win. And he did. In the next three frames, he did beat that break in every one of them. Mm. Made half century plus breaks and started to really rattle home, you know, towards the end. And the way that he finishes frames so quickly. We're going to see some of the, the shots here. This was uh, O'Sullivan. We were kind of hoping at this point to see a 147, but it was a sensible shot to play on this red up for the blue. We, did, we wanted to see him stay on blacks, but he's trying to beat a, a double world champion. He's got no time to take liberties only 4-2 up and he needs to um, well he needs to get the semi-finals actually but we'll talk about that maybe in a minute for mm. his ranking which is surprisingly low for the great player he is here he is knocking in all these balls and he's just a, a complete natural isn't he it's a, it's a gift he's got and um, we saw referee Olivier Martil setting the balls up that frame would have been much quicker the break was three minutes on and that was the last frame and um, I personally don't think Ronnie was all that happy with the table at the end. I think that's what yeah. the chat was about. The little frown on his face with Mark Williams there. I'm not sure he was entirely happy with conditions, but they'll be recovered overnight. But this is why the world of snooker, if you go back a year ago when he was on, you know, he is our Eurosport ambassador, he's very much one of our pundits, but with all due respect, we don't want him on the couch that much because the world of snooker is so much better when he's focused on playing the game. It's a waste, isn't it? I mean, he's brilliant as a pundit, but he's a better snooker player. I mean, everyone um, would love to be able to play snooker like Ronnie O'Sullivan. My feeling about O'Sullivan is why I think he's the greatest of all time. Hendry has lifted more silverware, but, the, you know, Ronnie's stacking up big numbers now. Six Masters, five Worlds, five UK. You know, he's not an underachiever, is he? Yeah. Let's be honest, but it's just the way he does it. The, the joyful way he strikes the ball and plays the game. I love to see it. And it, other players can only dream of being so successful as him in the way he does it, you know? Yeah, and... and, and, and those who are skirting in and around those final rankings for the top 16 who are automatically invited to the Masters, which yes. is obviously one of the Triple Crown, not a ranking tournament, just the top 16, they'll be loving the fact that the maestro is is conducting the, the snooker orchestra so well again. Yeah, you, you've hit the nail on the head because Ronnie was outside of the, the 16, which meant that he was going to be in the Masters as defending champion. Mm -hmm. Poor old world number 16 wouldn't play in the Masters, but Ronnie's in the 16 now because of all the points he's got. And he, let's be honest, you know, Ronnie outside the 16 is a bit of an injustice. He's, he's still up there as the top player or two in the world. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so, should we have a look at our picks? I mean, this is... Uh, you, it's you're just interested in, in those. Listen, it's just in the running order. It's not me putting it in. Of I course would, not. I would put them up if I was having a nightmare. I, I'd show you anyway. But Jimmy, Jimmy White, of course, who we call the Mariah Carey of Eurosport, he, he, he strutted out in a huff, didn't he, once he saw that Jones was leading. He couldn't bear to be here for this bit. So, this morning, we split them one each, didn't we? Yeah, we did. Um, and how close was that Higgins Selby? We all went O'Sullivan, so that's a green across the board. So the white gets one on the board, so do we all. And in the other game at the moment, Jones leads 4 2. And here they are playing at the moment. I mean, I, I think Jamie deserves all the credit in the world. He's taken some scalps already to get here. He's leading through. I would imagine just because of the magnitude of what a victory would mean tonight for Jamie. He might tighten up a little bit, but he's in a great position. Yeah, he, he was 4-1 up at one point, so um, the fact that he's been pegged back by Marco, yeah, of course Marco can still win because, as you say, he's got to get over the line. But from what I've seen of that match, we have been looking at it, uh, aside from looking at the rocket, you know, mm. um, I think Jamie has kind of, if you like, taken the game to him, attacked, and uh, he's rattled Marco a little bit, and if he continues to play that way, he can beat him. The only worry would be you start to wait for the winning line to come to you, which is not really how to win at any sport. You've still got to go out and do it in the manner that which you got you there in the first place. And as long as he sticks with that, I think he can beat Marco. I cannot believe how much it was Sullivan Williams that Jamie Jones watched. And people, whether they were in Eurosport <laughs> 1 or Eurosport 2 tonight, would have noticed it. I mean, his head was cocked just any time he wasn't taking a shot. Is that, is that a good Strange, thing? Strange, isn't it? It, it, it? You know, is that like a, almost like a counter worry for him? He's having a look at that and taking a bit of pressure off himself when Marco Fu's at the table mm. or, or should he really be 100% focused on his own game? 
he should be focused on his own game. He might have been looking across but not watching, if you know what I mean, just to take his eyes off the table. But it's not a great sign when someone does that, you know. I mean, usually when a player's 4 nil down, you can't bear to watch what your opponent's doing, but um, you want to see whatever's happening elsewhere. And it's, I guess, one of the, the uh, factors that come along with the wall being taken down at these venues now. You can watch the other match, but he should stick to his own because he's doing well enough. Absolutely, and he wants to do that. If he can reach six before Marco Fu, he will have a blue ribboned night tomorrow night in the semi-finals of the second biggest tournament in snooker against this man, Ronnie O'Sullivan, who's talking with Matt Smith. In pretty short order, Ronnie O'Sullivan is a semi-finalist. Mark Williams soft and puffed, but didn't really get near you. Um, first four frames was a bit, you know, nip and tuck, and um, he played a good frame to go four all, and, you know, it was keeping it pretty tight, and, you know, I couldn't really... Um, we both, you know, it was... I suppose a fair reflection. And then after the interval, I started queuing all right. And, um, you know, once I can start queuing well, then, you know, I don't really care if I win or lose. I just want to, like, you know, enjoy myself out and perform well. And, um, you know, um, a lot of my game, although I, I score heavy and, and whatever, a lot of it is based on my tactical game. And if I can get that right and I can start sort of um, buying myself a bit of time and, you know, I can find a bit of form, then, you know, I can read off three, four, five, six, seven frames on the spin. So um, for me, it's just about, you know, um, just getting that ring craft back, finding them telling safety shots, which kind of buy me you know, good opportunities, put pressure on my opponent. And, you know, if I can score a few, then, um, you know, I feel a bit more settled. Yeah, there was a particular moment, wasn't there, where you kind of waited to think about the right safety shot. Could have played an easy one, played a more complicated one, or one that you took more time over, mm. and it left him with really no shot. He ended up having to just a, a, a throw the cue at it, and actually you won the frame from that. So that's, that's good. Yeah, but it's not, yeah, I mean, that was, I know the shot you're talking about. So, yeah, that, that came out well, but, uh, you know, it's, it's a bit more subtle than that. It's about being aggressive with your safety, getting a good white, and, um, you know, giving them no chance to attack you. And um, when I'm able to do that and, you know, I'm opening the balls up, um, you know, because there's no point opening the balls up and putting them on over the hole. You've got to be clever with how you do it. And uh, so when you're feeling it, you know that when you open them up, you're going to get a good white and you're going to trap them. So, you know, it's just about getting in that groove. And um, if I'm getting that groove, and, um, you know, it just settles you down a little bit. And after the interval, there were moments where that groove was on show, wasn't there? You almost couldn't get around the other side of the table quick enough, thus, because the flow was there. Yeah, no, I was, I was, I was getting hold of the white um, a little bit better. And, you know, Mark said to me during the match, you know, he said, God, this table, it's... Um it's very heavy, you know, and you couldn't really screw back, couldn't get any bite into it. And they've been they've been great all week. And he said, and he said to me afterwards, he said, if I can't, he said, if you're struggling on it, he said, what chance have I got, you know, because I've, I've probably got a bit more cue power than Mark. And um, so it was a tough night for, for both of us, but I just had to be professional. I, was, I got frustrated early in the four frames, but I'm, I allow myself to get frustrated as long as it doesn't affect my next shot. And, um, you know, uh, so which is good, which is a positive. Yep. Semi-final awaits. Um, obviously, you know the boys are watching with interest back in the studio. Any, any message? Yeah, I've been missing them. You know, I miss Jimmy and Neil. Uh, don't miss Colin. No, I'm only joking, Carl. <laughs> no, no, I miss them all. You know, because um, they, they, we have such a laughter. You know, and it's, it's you, you, you feel like you're involved in the tournament, um, but without the pressure. And sometimes I think, you know, that's, that's, I'd rather that. But then when you get the real big highs here. You know, um, that's the, they're the best feeling that you can get. So, um, but you know, it's like I call, always call it the yin and yang. If you know, the, you get the mega highs, you've got to expect to get the mega lows sometimes, where it ain't quite going for you, and you know, you're screaming to get out of the place. Um, but you know, I'm, I'm, I, I stay professional and try to stay true to my professionalism and um, just be patient. And, and, and if it clicks, it clicks, and you know, you got you got a chance. For their part, they said they'd like you to stay in the tournament as long as possible. Oh, I know they would. Uh, of course, you know, um, they want me to do well. I know they do. And, um, you know, I'm just pleased to be in. And that was probably um, my, one of my best matches of, of the season so far. Uh, you know, for my all this, I felt like towards the end my safety come. I know I missed a few. But, um, you know, if I can not be at my complete best and feel like I can compete, then, you know, I've just got to be patient to wait until my whole game comes together and, you know, and that consistency is there and then, um, you know, hopefully I can win another tournament soon. Well, you're getting closer. We'll see you tomorrow. Yeah, cheers. Thank you. Well, there'll be two reasons we want him to stay there. First of all, because there's food left in the fridge here at Eurosport that we can eat because the man puts away mountains of food every day. Unbelievable. And second of all, it's like going to see Barcelona where there's great players all over the park. You've got Suarez, you know, Selby. You, you know, you've got Neymar, Murphy, but Messi's injured. And that's what it feels like 
if he's not in the tournament. Absolutely right. You know, he's a great player to watch. Interesting that he said that that's one of his best matches of the season. I'll be honest, I've seen him play better than that this mm. season, but what he has done is beaten a double world champion and someone he respects very highly. So he'll always see that, the, that as a big win. Um, and I thought I was right about that. The table clearly wasn't 100% because at the end there was a little discussion between um, Ronnie and Mark at the handshakes. Uh, that will be recovered overnight, so I, I can expect the, the very best of conditions all weekend. How long does it take, those guys? So, um, we still at the moment, of course, they have to wait because Jamie Jones, Marco yeah. Fu's still playing 4 2 at the moment to uh, Jones alone. Oh, well, t touch wood here. It looks like he's about to go 5 2 up. So, let's say they get onto those tables at about half 10, say. What time will they get to bed at? Well, they work into the small hours, those guys. I don't know. It takes three or four or five hours to get everything oh. back to normal. And then, of course, you see them at breakfast. You think, he's not looking too good tonight. They're not <laughs> out of town. It turns out he's had no fun. He's been <laughs> putting tables up and un uh, recovering them and all of that. So the these fellas work very hard. And they, they're unsung heroes of our game, you know, um, uh, guys that um, uh, only, you only hear about when the conditions are bad. When they're yeah. good, that's how they should be. But it's like one of those jobs, really. Yeah, so just finally, an honest opinion heading into the semi-finals, heading into our big weekend here on Eurosport, and every single shot will be live in Eurosport 1 and 2. Don't worry about that. Right through until that famous trophy's lifted. How do you rate the UK Championship so far? It's getting better and better, and I think, um, you know, with O'Sullivan in, the, in one half of the draw, he plays the winner of the... Uh, the Fu and Jones match. I'm not feeling it too much for their chances. I think Ronnie's playing better than them. The other match, it's very interesting. A tactical battle. Selby hopes to win against a, a great potter in uh, Sean Murphy. So it's really warming up now after a good few days. Excellent. Well, listen, let's just tell you exactly those timings for the big semi finals tomorrow here on Eurosport. So we'll be in Eurosport 2 um, tomorrow for Sean Murphy against Mark Selby. So join us at 12.45. We'll have all the build up to that before the players walk on. An easier day for Sean. Murphy today, an epic day for Selby and then it will be Ronnie O'Sullivan taking on Jones or Foo with Jones just about to go 5-2 up and you can watch the conclusion of the last quarter final on Eurosport 2 you won't miss a shot of that too, you. you can tune in there that's it from Neil and I tonight I think it's safe to say that our guy who usually sits on the couch is better off around the table the rocket is back